folks, and welcome back to Glenn and Adrian's Rock Talk. Adrian, good to see you today. Good to see you, Glenn. We're here today to talk about Paul Pina, also known as the guy that wrote Jet Airliner, the big Steve Miller hit. Steve Miller had this hit in 1977. He actually got his hands on the song after Paul made an album that was not released. Steve's keyboard player, Ben Sidron, also was the guy that produced the album. This is the album. It's called New Train. This was recorded in 1973, but didn't actually come out until the year 2000. I never knew that it existed, and um, both me and Adrian knew of Paul Pina back in the early 70s because our dad happened to uh, be a musician who traveled to Venezuela on this package tour. I think actually dad was more of the variety because he played an ARP 2500 synthesizer and he played Christmas carols on it. And at the time, that was a pretty big deal because this is 71, 72. Um, but he came back from those trips and he gave us this album, which Paul had just put out. It was recorded in 1971 in uh, Boston at Intermedia Sound, which used to be at 331 Newbury Street in Boston, uh, right down the street from where they later put a Tower Records, which is now gone as far as I understand. This record was the only thing that came out back then, but we listened to this a lot. And uh, I actually have a whole other channel that I've had up for uh, over 10 years that features uh, most of the tracks on this album, because at the time they weren't available anywhere else. Um, now they're available on Amazon as MP3s, if you want. Uh, I think there have been CD releases. There has never been another vinyl release. So if you happen to find one of these in the wild and it's at a reasonable price, by all means, pick it up. It's not easy to find. We've loved Paul's music for a long time. And uh, I remember when Steve Miller's hit came out, Adrian, I thought, well, it's okay. And I was reacting to his putting together the song and having this little zippy riff. I never even listened to words back then. I don't know about you, Adrian. I just, in fact, I didn't know what he was saying. I thought he was saying big old Jed and Lina. Like, like it was a, a Southern couple or something. It took me years to figure out, no, that's Jet Airliner. Oh, okay. I think Dad actually told us that he'd written Jet Airliner. This was before uh, the internet was available to tell us. And, uh, and then this album came out. And on this, of course, is the original Jet Airliner. It has a completely different feel to it. Interesting, the lyrics are different in the two songs too, uh, maybe just slightly different, but I mean, what really sticks out to me is the first line. Instead of leaving home out on the road, it's uh, in seat 42, just about to go insane. Paul references a 747, and in Steve's version, it's a 707, probably just for singability. Both the version that went on Conan and on Steve's single version, they cut out the line about the funky Yeah, the single version is... Uh, is uh, funky kicks that keeps going down or whatever? Yeah, they must have recut it because yeah, the, the original has the has the original verbiage. <laughs> we did get another version of it when Paul played it on Conan O'Brien in 2001, as he was going around on one of his last tours of the country. At least I know that uh, he hadn't been to the East Coast in maybe 20, 30 years by 2001. I happened to go to one of those shows. It was at the House of Blues in Cambridge. And uh, it was fantastic. I actually got to meet Paul. I had burned a CD copy of this since there was nothing else available at the time. Remember, this is 2001. I gave it to him, mentioned Dad. He remembered Dad. He's like, oh, yeah, the guy that did the Christmas carols on the synthesizer. <laughs> That's the guy. And I also captured his appearance on Conan. And I put that up on my, one of my other channels. And uh, actually, if you want, Adrian, we can give it a listen. Sure. And a very cool musical guest, Paul Pina, going to be here. All right, everybody, we are back. My next guest has enjoyed a fascinating career, touching on musical styles as varied as flamenco, the blues, and Tuvan throat singing. He also wrote one of the biggest pop hits of the 70s, which he's going to perform for us right now. Please welcome Paul Pina. Oh, yeah. 
another person Wondering where my strength is going Looking through the mirror of light Trying to find out which way the wind's blowing My heart keeps calling me backwards As I kill my boy that's 747 what Conan says here. That was fantastic. Thank you very much. That was excellent. Paul Pete, everybody, let's take a break. We'll be right back. Now, I've got to give kudos to two people. Conan, for getting Paul Pina's uh, pronunciation correct. We've been able to verify this. I know a lot of people look at it and say Pena, and it's no, it's it's actually pronounced Pena. Now, he's Cape Verdean. Maybe that makes a difference. I'm not sure. I also want to uh, give great kudos to Steve Miller for covering this song in the first place. It gave Paul a level of independence in his life as, as a blind man who had some other health issues. Without that song, that's very unlikely. He was on his own, and uh, that song and Steve Miller's decision to cover it is is what gave him a better life. Unfortunately, Paul passed away in 2005, but uh, pretty much ever since then, I've tried to make a mission to at least get his name out there and make sure his music is available. And I want to also give kudos to a few other people. Les Dudek actually covered Gonna Move, which is the opening song on this record that never came out until 2000. Uh, and it's the one that I think would have broken Paul as a major artist. And the reason, by the way, the record didn't come out is because he was an artist signed on Bearsville Records, the Albert Grossman label. He and Paul's management, I believe, got into a feud. He wasn't satisfied with the sound quality on the record. He said, well, no, it's not coming out. And he shelved it. And that was that. And uh, until Steve Miller came along a couple of years later. And again, you know, Ben Sidron, uh, Steve's keyboard player, being the guy that produced this, it just was very fortuitous that, that Steve got to hear it. I also want to mention a, a more recent artist, Derek Trucks. Here they do one of the songs called Something to Make Me Happy, You Happy, pardon me, uh, which is one of the songs on this record. So uh, kudos to them, because this is not an easy record to find. Not a lot of people know about it. Susan Tedeschi also covered Gonna Move. 
the uh, the opening track on here, the same one that Les Dudek did. And it's become one of her signature tunes. And now with the Tedeschi Trucks Band, it's become one of their, I think, one of their signature tunes. Pretty cool. And uh, I guess I would be remiss if I didn't mention that Paul also branched out into tube and throat singing. And he had a documentary made on him in the uh, late 90s, which ended up winning some awards at a Academy Award nominee. Okay, so and a winner of the Sundance Audience Award. So not bad. Um, this is very engaging. It's uh, it's kind of a strange niche. <laughs> they talk about a bunch of people in the uh, in the Frisco area getting together to make a trip to Tuva so that Paul can go compete in tube and throat singing, uh, a competition there that happens every three years out near Auto Mongolia, kind of in the center of Asia. As a matter of fact, I think they have the center of Asia, big monument there saying center of Asia. I, anyway, it's, it's a really good film. It's not really rock and roll, but it is pretty interesting. And it gives you uh, yet another perspective into Paul Pina's life. Yeah, that's a good movie. I, I remember seeing that. You do have to give uh, Steve Miller kudos for making the song famous. Yeah, no, wonderful thing. And I know that Steve still plays the song. Both Steve and Paul in their later years dropped it a full step <laughs> so they could sing it a little easier. Let me give you a couple more of, of his uh, bona fides here. His parents are Creole from the Cape Verde Islands. His father was a pro musician. He was born blind, playing piano at an early age, studied the acoustic guitar, bass, and violin, and traveled to Spain to learn flamenco. He appeared in concert with the Mothers of Invention and the Grateful Dead at uh, the Electric Factory back in those psychedelic days. He was featured along with James Taylor, Joni Mitchell, and Chris Christofferson in the 1969 Composers Workshop at the Newport Folk Festival. Not bad. He's played with Jerry Garcia. He's played, though, mainly with John Lee Hooker, Luther Johnson, Mississippi Fred McDowell, T-Bone Walker, which is, as you mentioned... Walker. Yeah, that's, a, that's what the song is about. It's about Paul's trip from Boston to Montreal to play with T-Bone Walker for the yeah. first time. Not bad to get a song like that out of it. And also, oh, just by the by, Muddy Waters, he also played with. So... <laughs> Oh, I mean, this guy, he had some special talents that people understood to be special. I also know that he played on the first Bonnie Raitt album and originally played with Bonnie for a while. So he had friends. He just got a terrible break. For the record, he also opened for Rat Dog a few times in 2001. There may be tapes around. I've never been able to find one. Anybody that... Um, that actually collects rat dog tapes from 2001, that summer. If you happen to have the Paul Pina set somewhere, I don't know how many people captured it, but if you have one, let me know. <laughs> We'd really love to know about it and to hear it. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this little foray into Paul Pina, and I hope you check out more of his music. He does have two albums, as we noted. <laughs> they are both worthwhile. They're both a little different. I couldn't even tell you which one I like better, honestly. Uh, this one's a little more polished. Um, they're both chock full of great songs. Uh, toe tappers, uh, really good time stuff, um, nothing super negative, just beautiful, beautiful music that the world should have. And uh, you can also check out more of his tracks over at my other channel, which will be linked below. And uh, other than that, I hope that uh, if you have comments for us, you will leave them and that perhaps you'll give us a like and subscribe so that you can keep up with our further adventures. So with that, uh, I think we're going to bid you farewell. Until next week. Hey, folks.